Tim with Tim's Tech Tips and our tech tip for today is KW monitoring in your buildings. To do that, we have a product by InTouch Controls. We have uh, a data monitor and I'll show you exactly how it works. Uh, we have a controller and then associated current transformers that'll plug in and again I'll show you how all this wires together and show you just how easy it is to do this. Let's go see. Let's see what we have here. We've got two boxes. One contains the, um, the KW monitor itself, the recorder. And what we have is the recorder itself have some little install pieces to help you out. We have very simple instructions. We have some wiring. And then we have our CTs. Now we have uh, multiple CTs depending on uh, the amps that you're looking at. Typically we're installing our recorder, our KW recorder, on a 200 amp uh, breaker panel. And so this is an example of our 200 amp CT. It's a clamp CT so it opens up, goes around the wire, and closes so you don't have to remove the wire. If we're, wor if we're gonna monitor a three-phase panel, you'll have three incoming uh, CTs. And you'll see one, two, and three for the main. This just simply plugs in, and you would have phase A, phase B, and phase C. Then for the load wiring, often they're 50 amps or below, and that we have a very inexpensive 50 amp CT. Again, it will clip over the load wiring, and it simply plugs in to the corresponding load. You have up to eight. So with this one box, we can monitor our A, B, and C phase incoming to the panel. You can have eight uh, load monitor. Now let's look at our controller because while this monitors and it wires to our uh, lines, we have a controller here and this will mount remotely. This will be on the wall somewhere. Powers with 24 volts. This also works as a uh, regular thermostat if you uh, need to use it for that. It has your standard thermostat hookups and provides power to this. It just simply, you wire it in, replace one of your existing thermostats, wire up the sub base, put this in, plug it together. Now it's on the wall, powered up, ready to go, and this will wirelessly communicate to our KW monitor box. And we'll install this in just a few minutes. Now with this powered up, this will wirelessly communicate with the customer's Wi-Fi so that the data that's recorded here, your, your amps and KW, transmits to here. Now you can go to uh, the website and get all this information and we'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Now, let's go put this in. Okay, now we've uh, hooked everything up and again, very, very simple install. We've got our uh, voltage pickup right here that 
I have landed on each phase. We've got three phases and I've been very careful to make sure that uh, my voltage pickup uh, on A phase matches a CT uh, hookup on the A phase. So now I've got CTs on my line coming in. I've got CTs on my loads and I've got my voltage. So now all we have to do is place this in here and uh, dress up the wires, make it nice and neat. Now this will wirelessly transmit, and you see we have our power on right here. Uh, this is now uh, wirelessly communicating with our controller uh, next door. So let's go take a look at it. Now that we've uh, replaced our old thermostat with the new sub base and wired it up just like the old sub base, it's very easy, everything wires up just like the old one, and we're ready to plug our new controller into the wall, and it comes with a uh, nice manual, easy to go through. It shows you step by step how to wire it if it's brand new, gives you all the terminals, which uh, most technicians will be able to do this in their sleep as far as the wiring. Uh, shows how using the setup wizard, uh, how to set this thing up. Uh, of course, you program it, uh, give it the time and date and all that. Um, this gives you all the different menus that we're about to go in and, and get it communicating with our KW monitor. Okay. Now that we have our controller wired up, powered up, ready to go, let's take a look at the menu. Let's zoom in here to the menu and we're going to go to the advanced setup screen and configure devices. Now we're going to say choose a device and in the screen it's already looking at the GM 921E9. Let's push configure. Okay, it's reading it, it's got the device address, and now it's giving us our inputs where we've already input the name of it uh, for the main. We gave it the size of the CTs, so this is a 200 amp CTs, and uh, we're telling it that we're looking at all three phases. Then we look over here, load one, we've named it condensing unit, told it that the, uh, con the CT size is a 50, and we're telling it that uh, on this particular unit, it's a two-pole unit. Uh, we can name it anything we want. Let me back up. Uh, but we've got it all set up now. Let's back up. Go back to the main menu. Now let's go to the internet and see what information it gives. All right. Okay, now that we've finished our install, we're going to go to the website. And uh, I've already logged in. Once you uh, register and uh, log in your equipment, uh, you can access this from anywhere, from any device that can access the internet since this is a web-based product, not a device-based uh, communication product. And so here is our main menu. It gives us our status and we're actually looking at a uh, install that was uh, done um, several months ago so we can actually look at uh, current data and history. So we look and see exactly the KW usage 
for at this moment. Uh, gives us a seven day energy history and seven day HVAC history. Gives us our status as that we are online so uh, we can look at our HVAC control tab and know exactly what's going on. Uh, our schedule is an occupied. We can make adjustments if we care to. We can look at our HVAC status uh, and it gives us a history graph or trend graph of uh, our temperatures and uh, uh, versus set points. But let's look at our energy tab. This is going to give us uh, our, his, our history for the last, it's, it's clicked on the last 28 days. And this gives us our KW usage uh, plotted against the uh, outside air uh, temperature graph. And it also, let me make this a little bit, uh, uh, I clicked on one day. Notice how it is giving me our usage. Let's blow this up. Uh, for this date that I just clicked on, it gives total energy usage, uh, our energy cost uh, and it uh, break down between occupied and, and our unoccupied. Uh, this is a Saturday when we were unoccupied. That's why it's giving us 0 kW occupied, 15 kW during vacant or unoccupied. And our average temperature is 74 degrees. Uh, it gives us this uh, graph. Uh, we can also uh, click on advanced graphs gives us a little additional data what's going on with our uh, power our uh, phase voltage uh, coming in lots of information here let's go back to the basic and see what other information let's look at this graph down here now this is giving us our usage these are daily averages, and if you'll notice, we can um, uh, group these things. We can highlight, uh, look at specific days. Let's go over here, and we can associate loads. Uh, we can easily, let me show you the... Uh, associations right here. The purple is HVAC, the amber is lights. Uh, now this is his test. I've just renamed it. We can name these associations any name that we want. We can have HVAC, pumps, lights, exhaust fans, whatever you want to associate. Now recall that we have in a controller eight uh, monitoring points. We could, if we had the first four points being HVAC and then a couple points pumps, couple points lights, we could group all those so that we see our data usage uh, per point. Now let's look over here and I can get our data here for Wednesday, July the 3rd, our HVAC was 9KW, gives us our cost and our total cost for that day. Um, lots of really important information and we can uh, uh, access this again from any device that can access the uh, internet 24-7. Uh, just great information to have. Again, all this information is available on any device that you care to. Here's the iPhone. We can uh, access this information from my iPhone and change, record, uh, whatever we care to do. Uh, uh, one final comment, uh, all this information that's accessible. We can print it out or we can export this information to our computer, to a computer file that we can use later. Thank you. This is Tim with Tim's Tech Tips.